Today we have proof that the Linux desktop has reached peak maturity. We're going to have a look at a couple articles here on just two of the many desktop environments. And uh, it's just, I, I saw these articles and I just had to laugh a little bit. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And I did want to talk a little bit, maybe reminisce about uh, the uh, little over a decade I've been on Linux. And uh, I got to say, it's it's been a great time. I, I really find joy in computing again. And uh, just the things that you can do with your computers is absolutely amazing when you uh, sit down and just, you know, give it a try when you want to learn things. I remember those days back in the old Windows 95, Windows 98, when you still owned your computer, uh, even an XP, you still kind of owned your computer. You can modify it the way you wanted, things like that. But uh, as time progressed on, we went from XP to Vista and Vista to 7. And even in 7, we had a lot less control over our own computers. We couldn't do nearly as much with theming. We couldn't do nearly as much with color controls or things like that. And then, of course, as it progressed further and further, you basically have a system that is what they want you to have. And the thing is with Linux is you actually have control over your own computer again. And I remember my first experience, of course, back then around a decade ago, Ubuntu was usually the very first experience people had with Linux. And so likewise, I had experience with Ubuntu and the Unity desktop was different and it was interesting. It was not particularly my cup of tea, but I said, well, if it's Windows 10 or this, I'll do it. But I was still trying to modify it a little bit, get kind of get that Windows feel. And that's actually when I found Linux Mint, which I'm using today. And uh, Linux Mint just has the exact feel and the layout of the computer exactly the way I want my computer to be. That is the option that I have. And uh, that's kind of why I switched from Ubuntu to Linux Mint that early on when I uh, first started working with uh, with Linux and just kind of looking for what I was looking for. Now, even then, at that time, Linux wasn't as mature as it is now. It still had periodic bugs from time to time, no matter which one of the desktop environments you were working on. And now that we have several mature desktop environments, we have some of the old classic ones that really were mature a long time ago, but they weren't really modern. You know, your XFCE, your Mate. These are good desktop desktop environments, but they're not what you would call modern as far as uh, integration and things like that. You know, online accounts and put in your online account in one place and account settings and then any available app is going to be able to utilize the that one system to show you your contacts, your calendars, your documents, things like that. And that's something the modern desktop environments do give you the option for. Of course, then we had in that time when I was kind of getting started, Cinnamon, of course, was pretty mature and has maintained that maturity, although there have been a number of changes in the desktop environment in that time. Of course, the two big ones which uh, migrated out, um, uh, Plasma, of course, that is also one of the oldest Linux desktop environments. It's just It just keeps maturing and getting better, kind of neat. And then, of course, you had the GNOME or GNOME desktop environment, and yes, both pronounced are considered correct. Gnome and a Gnome, go figure. But I, <laughs> what I wanted to kind of get into here, now it's the OMG Ubuntu article that kind of made me chuckle, but I had to go back and just illustrate the maturity of these desktop environments. So uh, looking at with Gnome, so Gnome 49 launches. And uh, again, there hasn't been a whole lot of change in GNOME over the last few years. Of course, they've adjusted some new apps. They've done some things in here that I actually just learned by reading these articles for the first time that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, they're kind of borrowing some Windows-esque things. Hey, maybe it's a reason I'm not a huge fan of this. Um, but uh, it was a controversy a couple years ago. Plasma actually put in a donation nag notification. And I stood pretty much against this because I do not think a notification should be there for a random upsell on anything. A notification should be exactly that, a notification about something on the operating system. 
this is a big problem with Windows is notifications uh, popping up to oh, try OneDrive. It's not set up. I I'm aware of that. I haven't set it up intentionally, you moronic spyware system. Uh, but Plasma, a couple years ago, they put in a donation ag, one a year, which you can disable to remind you, hey, this is a community funded project. And despite I'm not a fan of that, I have to admit that the statistics are such that it does show that that donation ag did indeed work and they did receive a lot of funding. And for that, I like it. But I still don't think that's the place for the donation. Well, GNOME in the recent version just added a similar thing, although uh, it doesn't tell us that uh, it is like Plasma's once a year uh, that you can disable. It just says a here a couple times a year. So yes, no, the, what they did do that I like is they put a donation button on the system information page. And that's something I said Plasma should do. And I'm okay with that because I have to go into the settings panel to see my system information on that system information is now an option to click the link to learn about making a donation to GNOME. But what I don't like is that they are now going to give you a donation reminder notification a few times a year. So now we even have some GNOME following Plasma, following Windows into the nonsense of notifications to tell you things that are not relevant to your current system. I don't like that. However... That being said, um, and hopefully we can turn that off. If you can't, uh, Gnome is dead to me. <laughs> if you cannot turn that crap off, because it's not a, it's not the purpose of the notification system is not to nag you for donations. Although, yes, I will admit it's probably going to increase their donations. I'm I, I understand that, but just because it's going to increase your profits does not mean it's the right thing to do. There's kind of a thought there. However, all that being said, after all of that nonsense, if you look at the rest of what's going on in the article, it's just like hey we have media controls on the lock screen now let's see what movie things it's like we have reached peak first world problems oh no i need to log into my system to adjust the song uh now you can do it right from the lock screen um which tells you it's deeply mature um I, i'm i'm making fun in a positive way here this is a cool adjustment this is a cool thing but we are to the point where we are solving now first world problems. there's no more bugs left to resolve now we have to figure Figure out, hmm, right. hey, let's put media controls on the lock screen. Something else for Windows to steal from Linux, by the way. Um, uh, but we have a dedicated accessibility menu on the lock screen. That's good. Uh, we can now adjust our monitor brightness controls on independent monitors. This is totally awesome. I like that. But notice that we are moving now beyond bug fixes into really good, useful features that we may not have had time for a decade ago because we were indeed still still dealing with uh, with issues. And then if we're, of course just gets into uh, you know wallpapers and things like that. Uh, oh, and look at this! It looks like it looks like they had problems pulling X out entirely. Who would have thought that X might still be needed? Um, so there you go. Um, but here's the article that kind of made me laugh. Plasma 6.5 is here. What's our featured thing? Rounded corners. The Linux desktop has gotten so mature, the now feature in the articles about the new desktop release is rounded corners. <laughs> oh, Linux is so mature right now, guys. Linux is so mature. Uh, that uh, there was a time we did you know, distro reviews, as soon as new distros and desktops came out, we covered them pretty early on the channel because there was a lot of really groundbreaking things. It's to the point now where the bugs are gone, the features are here, and now we're getting hyped up about rounded corners. Which, by the way, Plasma is so awesome. If you don't like rounded corners, you can toggle a button in the settings and turn off rounded corners. That's actually one of the features I love about Cosmic because the whole world's going with these giant circular pill bubbles and they are obnoxious as I'll get out and I can't get away from them. Cosmic has the option to say, would you like square, rounded, or pills? Hey, if you like the stupid nonsense bubbly pills that looks makes everything look like, you know, three-year-olds have designed it, cool, you can do that. But if you want to go with, like, solid buttons, you can do that. In fact, did you guys, speaking of that, y'all see the new updates to the YouTube theme? Whoa, talk about 
Oh, my Lord. I don't know. Like, did they hire morons over there to take over the UI design? I don't know. I've been thinking that for a while, but uh, just the, the latest update they pushed on us uh, just made me think it even more. It's like, how can we make this professional thing look more childish? Let's figure this out. And that's kind of what they're doing. Um, <laughs> but anyway... Uh, the sixth major update in the Plasma 6 series continues to add many, many new features and foundational improvements. The intermediate wins are usually small, subtle changes to reduce friction and smooth out. So the key highlights, of course, rounded bottom corners. Oh, man, I have been waiting for rounded bottom corners. Of course, they do say in the settings app, you can turn off the rounded corners. I'm co totally agreement with that. Uh, we have some ability to automatically switch between light and dark themes based on the time of day. This is something I believe GNOME has had this for a while. I know Ubuntu has had it for a long time. I think GNOME's had this for a while. Now Plasma adds us in. Uh, you can uh, save a pinned clipboard, so you can save multiple different things in a clipboard. Careful if you're using those password managers. Um, now we have... A Better ability to manage like muting all microphones with a single dedicated shortcut. So that's actually really good. Uh, as far as there was also something, oh, there it is, wireless networking. So you can actually connect to your wireless networks in the settings app and in the uh, and in the system tray. Uh, before you had to use the system tray to do that. Now you can do it anywhere. And then, of course, uh, when you share a Wi-Fi via QR code, the password is shared too. Clicking connect on the network hides other password fields, and you'll see the status message looking for networks. So there's a lot of things in here. And basically, as you look through this, all I kind of want to point out is that all of these things are just just the minor fine refinements inside of Linux, which just illustrates we have reached a point where there are very, very few bugs inside of your typical Linux distribution with your typical Linux desktop. And we have reached this point where it is becoming so good that there's really no reason not to switch to Linux for the average person. So, you know, if you if you've been holding back on switching to Linux because you didn't want to deal with little bugs. The little bugs are pretty much gone. We're focusing our energy on rounded corners and adjusting the desktop brightness on independent screens. That's the point we're getting to, which, by the way, some of those things Windows isn't even getting to yet. But uh, I thought that was an excellent article. And uh, uh, just, just to illustrate, Linux is, particularly desktop Linux, is becoming extraordinarily mature. And the reality is... There should be no reason not to switch to Linux for the typical person as far as the basic UI design and function of the system. Obviously, there might be some people that have to have certain applications for legitimate work needs. I understand that. But outside of those legitimate needs, it's probably better even if you're like, hey, I can't, uh, you know, I can't run so-and-so app. Figure out an alternative to so-and-so app unless you actually need it for like a workflow because probably you can replace it. Have a look at alternative2.net to see if you can find alternatives for some of those things. But there you go. Let me know your thoughts. Um, do, do you think that the Linux desktop is, is deeply mature now um, or do you think there's still a lot more to go? And let me know your thoughts about all that in the comments down below.